It's Terry here, D-Lab, with a special request video presentation for you guys. So my subscribers have been asking me to show a simple video of how to trace a signal through a standard amplifier, such as a Fender Champ. So that's what I've got. I've got a stock Fender Champ here that I have not worked on it yet. We're going to inject a signal, we'll go stage by stage, and hopefully it gets out that speaker jack. Right? So here we go. So here's the test setup. Obviously you've got the amp that you're going to check. In this case it's a Fender Champ model AA764. Got the schematic up here on the screen which is free on the web. Got a basic 20 megahertz oscilloscope here set up. Right now we're just looking at the input. I have an audio generator set at approximately 800 hertz at 150 millivolts which we're going to apply to the input jack to simulate the guitar. And we're going to do all this into this little dummy load. I showed you this in my last multimeter type video. So this has a 4.7 ohm resistor on an RCA plug. We're going to plug that in so that that speaker doesn't irritate you with this horrendous tone as we buzz through the chassis. We're going to signal trace the champ from its input jack all the way to the speaker output jack. Right? So we're going to go section by section. So right now, as I showed you before, we have a 150 millivolt signal coming into the quarter inch jack, which is where your guitar would plug in. It makes its way through the jack, and then it's going to go to the 68K resistor. And that's where I've got the scope. And look, there's the signal. That lead goes to pin 2 of the 12AX7. Now the 12AX7 has two little triode sections. We're on the first one, all right? So it comes in pin 2, and then it exits on pin 1, which is the plate connection. So we're going to move the scope over there. So now I'm on pin 1, which is this wire here, and it's going to its plate resistor, which is a 100K ohm resistor, all right? So there is the output of that triode. Now I had to increase my range to 2 volts a division rather than 50 millivolts per division because now we have gain, all right? And you'll see that even if I turn the volume pot, it doesn't affect it. That's because the first section does not use the volume pot, all right? Let's go to section 2. Now I've moved my scope onto the center terminal of the volume pot. And if you look at your schematic for that champ, you'll see that that's going to pin 7 of the 12AX7. So is my signal there? At this point, I have to turn up the volume pot to see it, right? Because now it's going through that control. And yes, it's there. And you'll see that the trouble control here affects that. So now the next question is, what does the plate of the second triode look like? So let's go take a look at pin 6. So I've moved my scope to pin 6. and take my voltage per division up a little bit. And there it is. There's my signal. Looks great, right? Once again, now I can play with my tone controls. You can see they're a little dirty. And it affects that signal. Okay? So that's good. Now, let's go to the other side of that capacitor, which is the 0.022. Just knock my ground lead off. Gotta be careful there. There we go. Bring it up. There it is. That's the signal going to the 6v6 grid. All right? Now, let's go right to the grid of the 6v6. So here we are, pin 5 of the 6v6. There's your signal. It looks great. Remember, I've done nothing to this amp. And it appears to be working excellent so far. Now I've moved my probe to the output transformer lead, which is on pin 5 of the 6v6. Now you can see this looks all weird. Well, that's because that signal is not referenced to ground. Remember, that's the B plus high side going through the transformer to the 6V6. So it is going to look weird. But the question is, is there a signal? Yes, lots of it. Now, let's take our scope and go right to the speaker output jack. Now in this case, I'm going to turn the voltage back a little bit. Because now we're back reference to ground for the audio output, right? There it is. So yes, the signal is making its way through all the sections to the speaker output jack. 
So if you had this amp at this point and you had no sound, I'd be taking a serious look at your speaker leads and perhaps the speaker itself. So there you have it, a successful signal tracing through a Fender Champ amplifier. Now one thing I wanted to point out is, this one has a grounded power cord on it, so I wasn't really too concerned about my scope grounding things out, but what I always do on my scopes is I either use a ground isolator or I have a cord where I've removed the ground lug, okay? That way, if by chance there's voltage on that chassis and you hook up a grounded scope, you don't get a big arc and scare the crap out of you, right? So always use a ground isolator on your scope. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to do some more presentations on the Fender Champ to help you troubleshoot these little guys. They're the greatest stamp ever made, and I really like working on them. Hope you enjoyed the video.